But let me, let me say a word or two about human rights for all. Um, and let me commend to you Archie McKenzie's book. I was reading uh, the first three chapters as uh, a reminder before uh, giving this talk. It really is, it, it creates that world of not only 1945 San Francisco, but the world uh, during, in Washington during the Second World War, and the world in, of one of the preparatory conferences for the San Francisco meeting, namely the Dunbarton Oaks meeting. Uh, an issue which Archie doesn't talk about, but which is uh, now much better known, in relation to human rights for all. The draft charter of the UN mentioned human rights just once. If you remember that time, at least our vague memories of that time. Remember there had been the League of Nations, which in many ways had failed in the 20s and 30s. And Roosevelt said, I don't want the UN to go the same way as the League. So he got Adlai Stevenson, uh, Archibald MacLeish, some others, to go around and have meetings in the US in the late 1944, early 1945, in order to rally groups that would support of the UN. And he spoke to church groups, they spoke to church groups, they spoke to the Jewish, uh, various Jewish groups were very committed. And they said, okay, but where's human rights? When they found there were only two references, or one reference to the two words, in the draft Dunbarton Oaks, they said, it's not going to be, you're not going to have our support. <coughs> so between the Dunbarton Oaks in 44 and the charter that was put to the San Francisco conference, I think there's a dozen places in which human rights were, uh, were mentioned. And then, of course, in 1948, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights was given uh, a major position. So, all early on, what we call the third UN, non-government groups and so forth, played a critical role in helping the UN get on track. Archie refers to two-track diplomacy, and you made some reference to Frank Bookman uh, in the, uh, in the um, San Francisco meeting. I think the third, the other points I want to make, uh, two other points with human rights for all. There was, well, it was absolutely remarkable. Remember, in the States, many blacks couldn't vote. Even the delegates from some African countries going across in the train from, uh, from New York to the Mexican they couldn't be served in the train until white delegates had finished, had finished their meal. Uh, that was the nature of the world. Britain had its colonies. The Soviet Union, the other real power, had its gulags. So there was an element of extraordinary vision in creating uh, the Universal Declaration and in getting clear references in the Charter. There was also an element of hypocrisy, total hypocrisy. They wanted the three powers that matter, were happy to have a declaration of human rights, as long as it wasn't human rights for implementation, and certainly not implementation now. So I think that's my second point. But the third one is that over the years, that which was agreed in hypocrisy has often been turned into uh, elements that with, with teeth, and that's what we've seen with human rights. It was proposed uh, in 1947, very early on, that there should be uh, a, in effect, the Human Rights Commissioner. It took 47 years before the Vienna meeting in 1993. Before that was agreed, and some of you may remember Mary Robinson, who was one of the early 
uh, commissioner, the former president uh, of Ireland. So we mustn't be discouraged if there's an element of hypocrisy or a delay before that which is agreed in hypocrisy begins to bite. But we can work, like many have done before us, in turning that which is agreed into hypocrisy, in hypocrisy, into something that matters. And in fact, if you look at the record of the human rights, we have a whole book by a Pakistani and an American on that. Um, we can see how over the years the Universal Declaration was turned into many other human rights uh, measures. The Declaration was turned into two covenants 20 years later. Uh, we now got the Convention on the Rights of the Child, which all but two countries have ratified. We've got the uh, Convention on CEDAW for the elimination of all forms of discrimination against women. And that's been uh, ratified uh, by uh, most countries of the world. So we've seen steady progress, by no means perfect, but often because of the role <coughs> of non-government and other groups behind the scenes.